So how many of you uh, shop at CVS? Makes sense. They're all over the place. Um, a CVS opened up about two blocks from our house, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, and that was my experience with CVS. Um, actually, they're kind of new to California. They came out here in the early 2000s. They bought a couple of regional chains. They started off on the East Coast, and they kind of gradually moved out west here. I've always wondered about that company because uh, they, you, know, you go in there, you get some drugs, uh, or, or some, something maybe around beauty aids or something like that, and then you can also buy your milk there, you can buy groceries, it's like, it's like everything. They sell everything. Sort of like a, a cross between a 7-Eleven and a pharmacy. So I never really understood the model. But they send out these great coupons, and so they're always getting me there to go to, to, to use these coupons. But what happened is very interesting. In 2014, they did two things that really got my attention. One, they changed their name from CVS to CVS Health. And then they stopped selling tobacco products. Now that was kind of an unusual thing. Here's, you know, this is a $2 billion business for CVS and a big money maker as well. And here, this large organization stopped selling tobacco. So it was very interesting to me. And that's really what I'm going to talk about today. What, what that was is an example of purposeful behavior. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And we're going to talk about like, what it is, how it works, and why every organization should take that on. So what is purposeful behavior? So it's a style of management. And it includes a number of best practices. Two are fundamental to it. One, that an organization take on a common purpose that's meaningful and important to its stakeholder world. And two, every action it takes, every strategic decision it makes is fully aligned with that purpose. So what do I mean by stakeholder world? So if you consider an organization, it's not that much different than a life form. You know, people are life forms and organizations are groups of people. Every life form, its success and how it thrives is a function of its relationship to its environment. So if you think about an organization, what's the organization's environment? They're all the stakeholders out there. So when I mean stakeholder, I mean any individual or group of individuals that impact or are impacted by that organization. And there are a lot of them. There are external stakeholders, there are internal stakeholders. So there are employees, there are customers, but then there's your supply chain, then there are partners, there are local communities, there are extended communities, there are special interest groups, the list, the list goes on and on and on. And all of those stakeholders comprise an organization's stakeholder world. And the larger the organization, the larger the world. So for most of the 20th century, I would say, stakeholders, organizations lived inside of a two-stakeholder world. Customers and shareholders or equity capital providers. Now, it's not like there weren't, they weren't aware that there were other stakeholders, but they were not in their view. So imagine you're driving down a street in a, in a city, and you're focusing on what's in front of you, and you're looking maybe in the, the rearview mirror, seeing what cars are behind you. It's the cars on the road, maybe people crossing the street, stop signs. It's what's right in your direction where you're going. And that's not to say you don't, you're not aware that there are buildings around, there are people walking on the sidewalks, but they don't influence your behavior. What's fo what you're focusing on is what's in front of you. And that's how most organizations have operated in the 20th century. In fact, if you look at most of the business education out there and all of the laws that govern uh, corporation be uh, behavior, it's all designed around a two-stakeholder world. So for the past 20 years, there have been a, a number of trends that have changed the balance of influence and power among stakeholders. For example, there is an abundance of capital today where there wasn't in the past, and it's getting more and more capital. There are a sh there's a shortage of knowledge workers. People 
you know, are, are, there's a tremendous demand for people that people don't know how they're going to fill all these slots out there. There are interest groups, special interest groups, that have tremendous power. The, 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 the extent of technology today, everybody knows everything. It's hard to keep secrets. Um, the, 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 the short of a time in terms of knowing what's going on, communication, everything has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. We live in a smaller and smaller world. So it has changed the power, the, the balance of power among stakeholders. And it's become a real problem for leaders. So how do you lead an organization? In the old days, it was real simple. You served your customer, and you maximized profits for your shareholders. Today, it's much more complicated. You can't think in terms of maximizing. You really have to think in terms of optimizing. How do I manage my stakeholder world? So the approach has been the old whack-a-mole approach. What do I mean by whack-a-mole? A mole comes up, you whack it down. Another mole comes up, you whack it down. And that's the way organizations operate. When a situation arises with a interest, special interest group or some stakeholder group, they address that. And you can see it now in the way companies are reacting to shortage of knowledge workers, the amount people are, are, are paying, the benefits that are being offered. You can see it in, in how organizations are taking on the green movement or they're being, trying to be socially responsible. This is all in reaction to different stakeholders out there. So this is, this is fine. It works. It works, but it's not very efficient. Because every time you benefit one stakeholder at the expense of others, it's wasting resources. And in the long run, you're not going to have enough resources to manage your business in a competitive world. So you can't operate that way. You need to find ways of creating win-win situations out there. And purposeful behavior provides that. Because if an organization takes on a purpose that's meaningful and important to its stakeholder world, then every action it takes is providing value and supporting its stakeholder world. So it's no longer win-lose, it's all win-win, as long as you follow that approach. So what do I mean by purpose? So when I, when I talk about purpose, I'm really talking about a long-term goal. Now, I'm not talking about three to five years out there, I'm talking about a generation. I mean, a long time to accomplish something. I like to think of a purpose as a solution to a specific problem that stands in the way of some desired underlying condition in the world being fulfilled. That says a lot, right? So let me break it down a little bit. Let's look at CVS. Their underlying condition is health, right? People's health. That's what they're up to. That's what they see as their underlying condition. And there are lots of underlying conditions. There's you know, poverty in the world, there's, um, that you need to address, there's, um, you know, clean water, I mean, you can go on and on, uh, freedom of expression. There are lots of underlying conditions that everybody would agree that we need this to have a great life for everybody. So there's, so there's, that's the underlying condition that they're addressing. But there's a, there is a problem, there's something that stands, and probably lots of things that stand in the way of people's health. One of those things is access to health care. And that's what CVS is committed to, that problem, how to solve that problem. And the solution they came up with is they're going to reinvent pharmacy. And if you want to know what their purpose tagline is, it's helping people on their path to better health. Helping people on their path to better health. Well, who wouldn't find that meaningful and important in their life? And that's their purpose. So everything they do, any time they take an action, any strategy they develop that's aligned with that, they are serving their stakeholder world. So that's one of the benefits. That's one of the benefits having purposeful behavior in your organization is that it allows you to optimize stakeholder, stakeholder value. But there are many, many, many more benefits. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's consider uh, CVS uh, again. So when they said no to tobacco, they did something that organizations find very difficult to do, saying no. If you're a successful business, you are constantly bombarded with opportunities. Well, how do you decide what opportunity to take on and what not to? Well, you need some kind of context for doing that. And that's what 
their purpose did for them. They saw that in serving their purpose, helping people on their path to health, tobacco wasn't doing the job. It wasn't, it wasn't aligned with that. So it gave them the ability to make decisions and to clarify exactly what they should be up to as an organization. It also helped them in better gov governance. So I don't know if you remember, but there were lots of articles out in those days about shareholders were very upset, uh, you know, the, the, actually the stock price went down a bit, how can you give up $2 billion in revenue, so forth. But they took the long view. So if you have a purpose, you're looking longer than the next quarter profits over the next quarter or six months, you're looking out very long. And, and you make decisions based on that. And that's where better governance comes into, into play. They, what they noticed was that there is a large customer base out there where they provide management services. They manage the prescriptions program for, for their customers. And, they, and, and those customers saw this conflict of interest. How can you, in, in one case, you know, sell tobacco products that create illnesses, and then on the, other and on the other hand, you're selling drugs that take care of those illnesses. It's like this is crazy. So by giving up, by giving up this market, the tobacco market, they gained a much bigger, bigger potential market in this whole area of health maintenance, in, in, in the drug area. So they could see the long view, and even, even those customers even those customers that, you know, that used to buy cigarettes there can still get value in the sense that they, they, look to, they look to CVS in terms of how that can support them in their health. Another big benefit was brand value. So I never thought much of CVS. I really didn't. Uh, you know, I love their coupons. 30% off is a big deal. But that was it. That was it. There's no loyalty there. You know, those coupons stop, I stop. And they better stop because you can't make money at 30% off, I guess. But now that I, I'm now aligned with what they're up to, I'm also interested in better health. And, I'm, and I can see that they're supporting me in that. And it's very different. My relationship to that company is different now than it was before. And that's building brand value. And they didn't have to advertise. They didn't have to spend a penny on advertising to get that. All they had to do is take actions that were aligned with their purpose. So that's enough about CVS. So I have a client. I had a client many years ago, in the, maybe not that many years ago, in the specialty produce business. So they made these weird, they, they sold these weird products, these weird fruits and vegetables that, you know, I don't know from where they got them, but they would sell them. You know, if you ever went into a grocery store, you, you'd know this. There's one section in the grocery store that has these unusual products. That's what they saw. And uh, they had gone th from, uh, through some hard times and, and uh, when I started working with them, and I'm a, I'm a numbers guy, I'm a, I'm a financial management consultant, uh, along with being involved in the, in the strategic side. So you would think uh, that's where the focus would be, given their, their past. But no, I didn't focus on that initially. The first thing I wanted to know is like, why were they in business? You know, like, why do we need another specialty produce company? Why do we need another distributor out there? What's so special about you guys? And they didn't know. They, I, mean, I mean, they thought a lot of themselves, but they didn't know why they were there. And so we started looking into that, and we spent some time discovering, like, what their purpose might be. And during that process, they came up with an article. They found an article that had been written in one of the trade magazines about this company that had said, this company is changing the way America eats. And they said, wow, that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the way America eats. And they got real excited about that. And then they started looking at, well, like, what's, what's underneath that? What, what's, what's that about? And they noticed that they're also committed to health, better health. And not only health, but joy. Joy was very important to them. So. Here's a company in the produce business, right? It's got the same underlying condition as CVS. So like, you can see that any organization, any company can have a purpose that solves a problem that stands in the way of some underlying condition. It's, it's available for everybody. So, so they got real excited about this. 
And then they, so then they noticed that what was their problem? Their problem was obesity in the United States. So this is a big problem. And if they could address that, you know, they could really, they could really make a difference in people's health. And the way they would do that is, is by basically providing these unique products, these, these specialty produce um, that are available, that are high in nutritious value, and, and they taste great, and people can really have a different experience in eating than they've had in the past. And that would change people's behavior. And they really got behind that. This organization got passionate behind that. Passionate is a real benefit. You've got a passionate workforce. You've got a highly productive workforce. And that purpose gave them that. And over a period of time, we were able to reduce the number of people in that organization and get more done. Because their people were just more engaged in the business. They were more involved in it. So that was just one benefit that they got. They also made, realized that if they were, you know, that if they were going to change the way America eats, they had to be much more involved and, and, and make much more of an effort. There was a sense of urgency about what they were up to. And they had noticed that they, that one of their strategies had been to kind of like be in every channel. You know, they would sell to wholesalers, they would sell to the, the and, you know, the retail stores, they would sell online, they would, they would try anything. And, and the last thing they tried when I, just, when I joined them was that they started a farmer's market. So, but when they realized that, you know, they've got to change the way America eats, they're not going to do it on a, in a farmer's market. And they realized that they're using too much of their resources and not getting enough of a change in the world. So they stopped doing all those things. And they focused in the one area that could make a real difference in their business was in the large retail chains and mass merchants. That's where they wanted to get their product out. That's the way they were going to change the way America eats. So it allows organizations to focus much more clearly into what they need to do to make a difference out there and to be successful as an organization. Another thing it provided was it, it empowered people in the organization. You know, it's one thing to say, hey, you're empowered. Go do but then, like, do what? You know, what direction? What direction do I go? How do I do that? A purpose provides that context so that they, they, know that they, they know that whatever they do has to change the way America eats. And then they looked at different things that they could do. And in the marketing department, they created these really unusual vid videos of how to prepare these foods that they then had on YouTube and became very popular because they realized that they had to get to the end user so that they could pull these people into the retail sto stores to buy their product. And, and, and they saw that, and they, and they empowered their marketing part department to come up with that. Another great benefit is you engaging other parts of your stakeholder world. So if you're a crusader, if you're, you know, which is what we called it, all the initiatives we had at that company were part of our crusade. And if you're a crusader, you need a lot of other crusaders. Right? If that's what you need. You need crusaders. So they started looking in their stakeholder world for like who else is out there that can support us in this crusade. And what they noticed is that they had schools that, you know, that were starting these little programs where they would bring food into the, you know, different kinds of food into the, into the schools and they would try it out and then they would have that available in the, in, in, you know, in the cafeterias. So they jumped on that process and they got very heavily involved in that, developed a line related to that, and then got some of their wholesalers to support them in, in, in providing that product to the schools. So it got them into an entirely new market that they hadn't seen before because they started looking at who out there can be part of my crusade. So you can see there are lots and lots of ways that companies benefit from taking on this style of management. But it's not easy. You know, otherwise everybody would be doing it. It's not easy. It requires mastering certain best practices around this behavior, this kind of behavior. And it takes time. I mean, even CVS, they sell liquor in their stores still, right? So they're not totally there yet either. But they're on the path, and so is that, that client of mine as well. So 
If you're interested in building an organization and having a thriving organization, you need to consider purposeful behavior as your style of management if you want to harness the power and resources of your stakeholder world. Thank you.